Okay, last lesson we looked at dominant seventh chords, basic sort of bar chord fingerings for them. And what we established is that if we're in playing a blues progression, not all blues progressions are one four fives, but a lot of blues progressions are one four fives, meaning whatever key you're in, you play the first chord, the fourth chord, and the fifth chord, one four five. Okay, and we established that we can play bar chord versions of those. Okay, and we did this. We had a major chord, major bar chord, we removed our pinky, giving us the dominant seventh chord. Okay, then we moved down and we played this shape, which is the four chord. We moved it up two frets to get the five chord. Now you might not always want to finger the chords that way. They can be a little bit muddy. If you've got a band behind you, you know, you've got your amp up, you're playing with a little bit of dirt maybe, well that low note, you know, is you know is also repeated here don't forget some notes are repeated and it can be a little bit muddy you've got the band you've got your bass player he's playing those low notes anyway <coughs> you might decide to rethink and make them a bit easier to play so let's start okay again this is movable just like those bar chord shapes were movable these shapes are also movable okay so let me get my fat ass up here and what we're going to do is we're going to do the one four five with some new fingering. So, okay, so the first chord would be A because we're in A now. What we're going to do is we're going to take our D chord down here, our open D, move it up to the fifth fret, like so, okay, and we're going to move our fingers up one string set. So every finger moves up one string, okay. Now that is a A dominant seventh chord. Okay. We're not going to worry about playing the E and the A strings at this point. We're just going to play those three strings. The D string, the B string and the G string. So the tip of the index will mute this A string. And we're not gonna play this high E string or the low E string. <coughs> it's just three strings, okay? So if you listen to that, listen to that sound, compare it to this one. It's less dark, it's less muddy sounding. It's the same basic chord, but you stripped away a load of the unnecessary components and streamlined it, basically. Okay, so there's your one chord. Okay, now aside from this chord, there's another voicing for this chord. Let's go back to our bar chord for a moment. Okay, now I said if we played a major chord and removed our pinky, we'd have a dominant seven. That's true. Now let's put our pinky back because that note that our pinky is fraying is just the octave of this note. They're both A notes. So, let's put our pinky back down. That gives us a major chord. Let's remove the octave instead. Okay, we're removing that. That leaves us with, basically, if we've got a major chord, remove the bar. That leaves us with these three notes. Sorry. <coughs> now, we're gonna refinger slightly. What we're going to do is we're going to put our middle finger on the seventh fret of the A string, our third finger on the same fret on the D string, first finger G string on the sixth fret, pinky finger. 
B string, um, 8th fret. We're not playing the low E and we're not playing the high E. That is a dominant 7th chord, that's an A dominant 7th chord. All we've done is refinger it. Okay, so listen, dominant 7th in A, bar chord. The second fingering I showed you, like the D shaped fingering. Third fingering. Now all I'm doing is sliding in, making it sound a bit bluesy, but that. There are other voicings, these are the popular ones, these are, see, these are the three that I would use. I would typically, I might play that. I'm most likely to play this one. But you could also, this one as well, is a nice one. Okay, that's three seventh chords. That's for your first chord only. <coughs> okay. That's for your first chord. Now let's look at the four chord. Four chord is a D chord, okay? So D dominant seventh, we established in the last lesson that we can play it like this. Okay. Now this chord, would all, this will also apply to the five chord because the five chord is also rooted on the A string and is found two frets up, right here. Okay, let's go back to the four. Another way of playing this chord is to put your third finger on that root note, mute that low E. Okay, we're going to put our swearing finger on the adjacent, the adjacent fret, okay, fret number four, D string. Uh, index finger, fret number three, B string and pinky finger, same fret as your root note, on the G string. We're not playing the high E or the low E. Okay, so that's a dominant seventh chord. You might, you probably play that over that. This one's quite high pitch sounding. Nothing wrong with that. If you want those high registered notes, then that's okay, that's fine. But you can play it this way. Okay, so that means you'd move this shape up two frets to get your five chord. Okay, so there's your four. Move it up two frets because your E note is your five chord, so there you're rooted on the E. Five chord, five chord, four chord, back to the one. Okay, <coughs> now then, let's look at some more voicings, some more voicings for this four and the five chord. Okay, what you can do as another option is rather than play your four chord like that what you can do is so that there's your finger in there that's what we just learned what we're going to do is we're going to move all our fingers but we're going to leave our swearing finger in place on that fourth fret on the D string we're going to put our third finger on the adjacent fret number five on the G string. First finger, third fret, B string, little finger, fifth fret, high E. We're muting the A string, we're not playing the E string, the low E. So we're playing from the D string down. 
there's your four chord. Move it up two frets, there's your five. Yeah? Five chord? Four chord. And back to your one. Okay. So just to get a nice clear shot, if you can see that, <coughs> this was the chord we had played before. For your four chord, that's the D, okay? We've removed all our fingers except that one. Get that intact. We put our third fret, sorry, third finger there. Pinky finger on the E string on the same fret. First finger, uh, third fret, B string. Move it up two frets, that shape. Five chord, four chord. One chord. Okay, so we learn dominant seven there. We learn that we can unmuddy that by playing the same thing there, just making it a smaller chord. We learn that we can, <coughs> if we're on the one chord and it's E rooted, we can also play it here. Okay. For the four and the five chord, we learn that we can play a dominant seventh this way. But we also learn that we can play it here. So there's the five chord, four chord. And then finally, we learn here another shape. Five chord. Back to the one. Okay. Why well, have so many finger ins? Well, the tonality changes. The way you finger them will change the tonality. If you're on a 12 bar blues and you've got a lot of bars of that, you might decide to do and then go straight into that one. mix them up, you know. <coughs> so that's why it's to, it's to not sound boring, basically, and to give yourself some options and find which is the easiest for you to play. So yeah, these are common in blues. They're not exclusive to blues, um, but they are alternatives to the bar chords. And they're really handy, really easy to play. This one particularly, it's just a D chord, but you move it up a set of strings. Okay, now if we were in G, I'll just do it in B, okay? They would be a, you sort of be like a D shape if you like. Dominant seven. The other shape. Sorry. If I can finger it right. Okay. Your four chord would be E. Rather than play that. You could play that. <coughs> You could play that. So there you go. Some alternative fingerings for dominant seventh chords. They're very easy. Just get them down, practice them, get them in your muscle memory, and uh, you'll be laughing. Okay, next lesson we're going to look at how we can use these chords. Um, alternatives to, to strumming basically so I'll see you there